The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 5th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial, then we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're in our Tigers, then well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out here. That mixed bag has the Dow trading to the upside by about 87 points, while the S&P is trading to the downside by 19 points. The NASDAQ 100, 228. That's one and four tenths percent. Russell's off 19. Semi's down 49. Trannies are up just a tad. New York Stock Exchange up two tenths percent, 33 points. You've got uh, Spot Volatonics trading out at 17.32. Still well below its 50-day exponential moving average. Gold is up nine dollars. 18.23 is the print. Silver up, <coughs> excuse me, a nickel. 23.11 there. Light sweet crude up 78.51. She's trading out, or that's up a buck fifty. That's nearly two percent to the upside. Natural gas having a nice move, three percent, but still not taking out its key level of resistance. So it always makes that move a bit suspect out there. So let's begin the day here. One of our first questions in the Tigers Den was if we could go take a look at my nine, uh, my eight panel. Uh, NQ charts out there in search of, you know, what is it giving, what, what message is it generating for you and I? So as we were coming to that one o'clock time frame, that 1 p.m. bar, uh, that's the, uh, it, what Price was doing was taking out some hammer candles. There was a nice hammer candle from the uh, NQ this morning at uh, 10 o'clock. There was a hammer candle. I was on the 30 minute chart. There was a hammer candle. No, there was not a hammer candle that formed on the 60 minute chart. So just that hammer candle. That's been taken out. Um, your bar number seven of a TD9 count. I don't have a bottom on the 60 minute. I don't have a bottom on the 120 minute. Uh, we are in wave number seven. Ooh, I take that back. No, no bottom signal on the two hour time frame chart. Potential wave number seven count that's extending itself, but price is breaking through on the four hour time frame, 16,145. That was its breakout level. So that's not looking good. So if you're to ask me, where's the next stop inside the NQ? I'd have to go with 15,925.75. Uh, that is the breakout level uh, for the five-hour time frame. And, uh, and, and, and we'll continue this conversation, but we're going to do it with Brent in Martinez, California, who is calling about the NASDAQ as well. So, Brent, thanks for calling. And uh, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. It's funny. The other day it was gold. Today it's the NASDAQ, I guess. We have some kind of connection for whatever reason. We seem to be thinking about the same thing. That's okay. So did you, did you take that trade on gold? I did, yeah, yeah, that's Good. worked out pretty well. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm in that. I'm in that same trade, uh, watching what it's doing as we get up to this resistance level. Here, we'll come back to the Nasdaq, but uh, what 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 gold has done? The level that you and I are watching out there, and anybody else that might have taken that trade, eighteen twenty seven seventy is the area of resistance. That's a sixty minute TD nine count breakdown level. And the other time frame, Brent, that I'm watching out here is the four hour time frame. 
The last major top out here, a significant top, I should say, in gold, that took place, and that was with a TD9 count. Now, the TD9 count pattern there was on the bar following bar number nine. I don't know that this one is going to get there. So we have that same TD9 count out here. So I've just simply moved my stop up. I believe my stop is about 1820 right now. So we're up at resistance. I just want to share that with you. Would love to see it break through that area. Uh, but at least that's the update on that gold chart. But let's go back to the NQ and uh, tell me how I can best help you here. I was just noticing on the, uh, I was looking at the triple Qs, but I'm, I'm sure it will show up on the NQs as well. But if you go back to the November highs, there's been multiple AB equals CD patterns that as they've completed have given an opportunity to, to you know, take a long position. So it looks like we might be in the midst of one right now. That's, it, it, I think it's at least on a one-to-one, -one, maybe not quite yet. And just wanted to get your thoughts, which I think you're starting to talk about potentially looking at that as a, you know, maybe on a shorter term charts that there might be, you know, looking for some type of bottom. Well, I, I, at about noon, I most certainly was. I didn't pull a trigger there because I didn't get any kind of real confirmation on a, on a shorter term time frame chart, uh, which is uh, different than, than this set out here. So I do. I have another set of charts that I also use where I'm, I'm taking a look at five minute, 10 minute uh, time frame charts. So, so as we're getting into a support level, you know, I want to be able to see some kind of turn there. No, I don't have those. The shortest term time frame I have here is a 30 minute chart. But um, I can tell you that the market breadth for the 60 and the 240, the TAS market breadth is negative. So I immediately went to the 240 minute chart. This is, you know, hour, hour and a half ago because I was looking to possibly take in a day trade here as price was getting right back to its breakout level of support of 16, 145. And uh, at that noon time frame, it, or 10 o'clock time frame, I should say, it generated a nice hammer candle holding that level out there. But the, the shorter term time frame charts were not suggesting that now was the time, or that then was the time to take that uh, trade out there. And so the, the moves to the downside have extended. My best estimation of where price is headed to now would be that breakout level of 15,925.75, we're at 16,034. So as we get down to that area, uh, the 30 and the 60 minute chart, more likely than that, will get to TD9 count patterns out there. And so I'd be watching for that. So I'd be watching that 15,925.75-ish area out there. Uh, if that doesn't hold, then we're likely to see a move back to the 15,781, 15,588 area. So the NQ is a, a weak link out here. Uh, you had mentioned the Qs. Now, when you were talking about the Qs, you were talking about an A to B equals CD to the upside, Brent? Or? Uh, no, to the, <clears throat> uh, to the downside. It, it was okay. pretty evident when you uh, had the charts up there during the top of the hour, you know, update. Yes. You can just see it just looking at it visually. You can see there's a definite pattern there on the daily. Yes. And there has been, you know, multiple. There's just like the third one that, that you know, is kind of the same type of pattern. And, and this one looked like it was getting close to completing. And then it can do an expansion. So I maybe you can draw that in and see where, where we're at. Sure, sure. So another thing, now I just put up the QQEW. I'll switch back to the Qs here momentarily. But another reason, and I'm just sharing this with you and, and others out there, that I was considering taking a long uh, position in the NQ was at the noon time frame, the QQEW, the equal weighted ETF, had not taken out yesterday's low. I just switched to that chart to see that that is no longer the case out there. So that was kind of a little divergence potential. And if I would have seen the real bottom signals there, I would have fired away at it. But we don't have that here in the QQEW. We get back to this break. We'll take a look at the Qs and the potential A to B equals CD to the downside with Brent in Martinez, California. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com. 
TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. So we're taking a look at the A to B equals CD pattern with Brent in Martinez, California. So Brent, for me, I, I lessened the likelihood of an, it being an A to B equals CD pattern when the retracement gets beyond the 0.786 retracement level. And in this case here, the B to C leg for the Qs was 86.78. Once you get above the 0.786, it's almost more of like a consolidation pattern. And yeah, you might get down and get below the swing point, the B point of that, but you're not that much. I mean, the B point's at 377. The one-to-one -one is at 373 out there. So um, it's it's... You know, is it technically a valid A to B equals CD pattern? It's kind of like the ES Mini or the uh, SPIES uh, or the S&P. They all have a similar type of A to B equals CD to the upside, all confirmed with a bearish reversal candle. But in their A to B equals CD patterns, they were also like a 0.86 uh, retracement out there. So um, it, it just uh, so that, that's just, that's my take on the A to B equals CD pattern. You know, we can't. Uh, we can't interview H.M. Gertley out there, but but that's 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 my take on it. So right now, the Qs themselves, the level to be watching here, even though it's trading below, is the 392.27 level. And the reason is, is that because this is a slightly bearish structured, not slightly, it is a bearish structured profile. When price gets above that, which it did on the trade day of December 27th and remained above it for three, four days out there, when... When price pulls back into it, the counter trend move, if it's just a counter trend move, would stop in essence at the, and it's all based on the close, not the way it's trading at 119 in the afternoon. So if price closes today above 392.27 or thereabouts, uh, it's got me uh, wondering what its next move is going to be. Does that confuse you? Make any sense? Oh, it totally makes sense. No, and I, I can understand what you're saying about the. You know, AB equals CD pattern that that, that has some legitimate legitimacy to it. Yeah. You know, that if it's going beyond that, that uh, that the retracement is you know more than like you said, it goes beyond the point seven eight six. Then yeah, that starts to bring into question whether it's you know legitimate or not. So. 
Yeah, you know, I'd typically look at look for look for other patterns, you know, to to help us. But look, I don't want to ignore. Look, what we do know about the queues is that they've got a, a valid top right here at November twenty second. So not until that gets taken out, um, will would I be able to suggest there's going to be any kind of significant move to the upside? And and I think as you know, my anticipation is that we're going to see a market that moves lower, begins maybe it's already begun out there in some of the indices, and uh, should at least last through the end of the month. Uh, which is a typical seasonal cycle. If we get beyond that, uh, and in fact, if in fact the markets do move lower out there, then it could be an indication of um, you know something more uh, damaging taking place inside the NQ. Though I mean, it's it's really got some issues out here. So maybe we can't uh, determine whether it's an A to B equals CD to the downside inside the NQ. What we can do is take a look at its weekly time frame, and the weekly time frame has a confirmed Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Last week was a bearish shooting star candle, right up at, uh, at resistance, which was the top of its profile. Price is now below its green oscillator and change line. So uh, <clears throat> on a monthly basis, we're, we're kind of new into the month out here, obviously. But uh, a bearish reversal candle on a monthly basis would then say, okay, we're headed lower. And that headed lower, it opens up the door for 12207 I'm not saying that's where we're going, but if we do get that signal that confirms the Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal in the NQ, the daily already has a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. So the NQ has got all of the topping patterns that we need, in essence, out here. It doesn't mean it's a one-way move to the downside. In fact, for and for the markets to get down to the 12207 level, uh, which would get us into probably a bear market type territory of a 20% correction, um, the the issue is trying to figure out what's the fundamental thing that's going to, you know, keep inside the news to push the markets lower, Brent. And and I just haven't been able to completely figure that piece of that puzzle out. And it is an important piece of the puzzle, or at least I believe it's an important piece of the puzzle. So sorry to ramble out there, but uh, yeah, that sometimes that's what you get when you call Stevie. <laughs> that's quite all right, Stevie. Yeah, I mean, we it's, a lot of it is just you know it makes some. Um, Sense that here you know, we've had this huge run. Yes. The valuations are getting a bit extended. I mean, it, it would make sense to, I think, in a lot of ways, it would be healthy to have the market pull back. You know, it's just been nothing but pretty much, a, you know, for the most part, looking at a longer term chart, there hasn't been much of any real pullback in this thing for a number of years now. So well, uh, and so, and that's yeah. where Brent, and that's where Brent, if we, if we take now a look at the longer term chart, because you're absolutely correct out there. The one thing that stands out or should stand out to both you and I is that oscillator and change line. Because we can see here that ever since April of 2020, we're now in January of 2022 out here, that any declines have found support at that oscillator and change line. So that's a cool thing because if we do see a close below this level as we come into this month here, it provides you and I with a really important piece of information out there. So at this stage, we would say until that until that pattern changes, uh, what price is going to do inside the NQ is uh, find support at that oscillator and change line for its monthly time frame. And currently that's at 15,970 out there. So <clears throat> thank you for bringing up the longer term picture because it just forced me to open up that window and for everybody to visually see, as you pointed out, a level that I think you and I can, if we get a close below, we'll say, okay, there's been a change at least going back into uh, more than a year out there, going back to February of 2020. So so thanks for bringing that up, Brent. I appreciate that. Absolutely, Steve. Thank you so much for all your help. And it's always you a bet. pleasure talking with you. Just have a, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And I'm sure that we'll talk soon. Sounds great. Thanks so much for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, we had another question inside the Tigers. I just want to get to it because it's easy for me to um, forget about those. It's just I've got a little small screen. This was for Mr. Bill, who wanted to take a uh, look at the uh, 30-year Treasury. So you, you may recall yesterday we got a call from Gary, who was de trying to determine whether or not to to uh, exit his position. And at that moment, when we looked at the uh, eight panel charts out there, what you and I recognized was that on the weekly basis, price had made its way back to its breakout level of support, 156.31. Now, at the same time that it was doing that, we had bottom signals. We had a potential bottom signal on the daily time frame. That was negated yesterday. It had a TD9 count pattern Monday, which has got bar number one listed to it, the bar following bar number nine. And yesterday's close was below that, suggesting to move lower. However, if that's going to happen, if you take a look at the intraday charts out here, all of them, each of them, 30-minute, 60-minute, 120-minute, 240, 
and the five-hour time frame chart still have their bottoming signals, either road momentum indicator bottoms or uh, TD9 count bottoms. So what I was really kind of suggesting to Gary, uh, as I wrote in the newsletter for everybody this morning, was if there's a close below yesterday's low, that low, by the way, is going to be a 156.13, then I'd have to say the signal is to jettison the position and that price is going to head lower. And the next breakout level would take us into the monthly time frame. And that's at the 139.14 level. So now, I'm not guaranteeing that that's what's going to be the outcome if we get below yesterday's low. Because really, in the case of the monthly chart, price would have to close below on a monthly basis below 153.07. But at least would be the target, 153.07. So uh, that's what I see, uh, Mr. Bill, when I take a look at their 30-year treasury. It still has the potential for a bottom to form here, uh, but it's going to be watching yesterday's low that will be the key to that. Because the close blow it, you negate all those intraday time frame signals. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Fort Collins, Colorado, and speak with Mark. Mark, Happy New Year to you. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good. Happy New Year to you. 
Thank you very much. So we're going to talk about Square, which looks just miserable out here. Um, uh, what's going on with Square? I do not have it. I've been patiently waiting. Um, I'm looking at potentially buying it around 134. Um, okay. It's a, kind of a swing with decent volume. Uh, looks like it may have some support there, but I and it's also. But I'm a little concerned. It's um. I, that would be below the 200 the exponential moving average okay. as well. So okay. Okay. Wondering what you think on that. I also put in a buy on another stock, which actually filled today. So I'm wondering what you think about that. If we have time. Sure. We'll we'll we'll, we'll we'll make the sure we'll make the time for it. So okay. uh, first, with regard to the daily, weekly, monthly, prices below all profile levels there. So that's one of the reasons, folks, why I said to Mark, it looks just miserable because all key levels of sports so far have uh, broken. If I just go from a retracement on the monthly time frame chart from the low back in 2020 up to its high, uh, the 0.618 retracement area is 130. You probably already know that. I think you're saying about 134. Yeah. So let's just pull yeah. over the white background chart, see if there's anything that we can see. And we're going to actually start with the monthly time frame since this uh, chart patterns here look so miserable. Just looking to see if there's any kind of a signal out here. Well, there's not. So closing last month below 190, 136 was uh, not a great move for Square. That was its breakout level. It does have a valid TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So uh, if if uh, this mark would tell you that Square could get back to $42.33. So that's what the monthly okay. chart is communicating to us. So you got the fours, uh, or I think you said 134, right? So I don't know that yeah. that's what the outcome is going to be. But if you were to ask me, wait, where's the support in Square on the monthly time frame? It's $42. And thirty-three cents. So let's go see what the weekly. Hopefully, it's got a little bit better news out here. So the weekly says you could actually see some type of bottom pattern form this week. This is the bar following bar number nine. So the cool thing about this, and that you're looking to possibly take a position, is whatever the low ends up being this week. If you start seeing price trade below that low next week out there, and certainly close below whatever this week's low is, we'll know that that was a. That, that Steve-O shouldn't have said what he just said, uh, although it is what it is. It's a TD9 count pattern that's out there. And and the other reason why there could be some type of at least short-term bottom is that its oscillator and change line changed colors about four or five weeks ago. Typically, when that happens, when we do get a bottoming pattern, we see price and that line catch up to each other. So if, in fact, there is not a bottoming pattern that unfolds in square, and since we see an A to B equals CD down pattern out here, Mark, what I would do on the weekly basis, even though it's a TD9 count, I'd want to see the Gartley buy signal. I would want to see the bullish reversal candle. If this doesn't bottom, then this tells us that the next area of support or the breakout level of support will be $84.06. So before I switch over to the daily time frame, Mark, do you have any questions about this chart here that I can nope. uh, explore with you? Okay. All right, so we know the daily and the weekly are just saying, man, much lower price for Square. Now, the cool thing about what we looked at on the weekly chart is it had that uh, TD9 count. And uh, so when you do that on a weekly basis, you like to see some type of bottoming signal on a daily. Well, we have a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. I have wave number seven, so we've got two of them. And what you would want to see here is some type of bullish reversal candle. What I will share with you is the last time that we got that bottoming signal was on the trading day of December 21st. It had that same Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. And what we can see here is that was a bearish structured profile, and price was unable to get above the center, which was at about 171, you know, give or take out there. Um, now you're below all profile levels. So it's got potential. Um, I would now see in the daily time frame chart, I would say if you got the bullish reversal candle here, then your battlegrounds are going to be 159.83, 165.17, and 169.17. Above 169.17 would say you've got something out there. So does that information uh, help you? Uh, if I confused you? Uh, it's all good. I'm, I'm going to um, hold off on... I'm putting that on that order for 134. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, so you know, watch it. Continue to watch it. And please uh, either call back in or write to me if we see some other activity inside of Square on the daily basis, and we'll we'll take another look at it. What's the other instrument that you're in that I can punch up here for us? Art UPST. And uh, I actually grabbed a few shares at 129, which is the low of the day. I just kind of put it in on a whim and got it. So now I want to know if that was – how, uh, how right that well, was. Well, sure. What was the ticker symbol again? Was it GPST? 
UP, upstart, UPSD. Got it, UPSD. Okay, thank you. So this is going to take just a moment here for my charts to get everything going for the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. Uh, it'll take just a moment here. And uh, now, so what, GP, uh, what UPSD, upstart, has, what does it have? So it's got a wave number seven bottom. Uh, that took place on December 17th. So you'd like to see that level hold. That is 128.45 or 129.22. Um, so that's okay. So you still have uh, you know a valid bottoming signal out here. Let me look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart tells us what weekly chart says that this is going to that this we're currently in bar number nine. But in order for bar number nine to actually complete, you need to see at least a move below or a spike below. 128.45 and so far the low of uh, this week is only 129 so if it does do that get, you know spikes below that where it should find support uh, is uh, at 121 that is the breakout level so uh, going back to the the daily you already have a wave number seven um, that will if you get a, a spike below that that candle session though it's going to sort of neg it's not it's going to negate that pattern signal out here but the um, so, you know, you got potential for a TD9 count, but it has to still spike below that low out there. And on the monthly time frame chart, there's just not enough data to help us. So what I want to do here, this, uh, this set of charts here, uh, Mark, doesn't have my short-term signals on it. So I just want to quickly... Um, I just want to quickly go to a set of charts that would for you, UPST, since you're in this trade and you're trying to make a decision whether to stay with it or not. Because what we'd like to see is we'd like to see some type of uh, bottoming signal and maybe some resistance levels failing. So now I'm just going to look at I've got a 10 and 30 minute chart for you. And the 10 minute chart uh, doesn't show anything great. What you'd like to see is it close above its oscillator and change line, which is currently 130 and change, 130.12. If I look at the 30-minute time frame chart, you've got the potential for Rose momentum indicator bottom, but it needs the bullish reversal candle. So your question, is this a good buy or not? Um, I don't know. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a clear signal on this one. Were you looking at uh, were you looking at some other metric maybe some a volume test or a swing point test or is there something else that I should go take a look at is what I'm asking. I was looking at some um, there were some bars back I'd have to look back at the let me see here there's some bars back um Oops, I've got the wrong. Oh, well, I see. I see where you. I think you're. You're probably back into the uh, September 2020 time frame out here. That may be a time period because it seems like that's the area right now where it might be uh, gunning uh, for at least that's the next set of swing points. There was a a nice breakout. So I think this is really what you're looking at. Would be my guess. I was looking which would break out uh, August November. August 5th 2020, which had some yeah. nice volume there. Yeah, 39 million shares. So, but price might be gunning for that area, and I'd say that area is probably the low of September 4th which is 134 even Stephen. Maybe it's the low of September 11th, 134.26. So it looks like maybe that's where price is headed to. All right? It's under It's under that. It's at 129. So. Ah, okay. okay. All right, Mark. Hey, thanks so much for calling. Again, Happy New Year to you. We'll look forward to speaking to you soon, and uh, we're pulling for you on these uh, trades out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper Bytes Investment Newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we've got about 10 questions in the queue here. So Stevie will be a little bit quicker with regard to my response. The first one, this was from yesterday. Uh, this is Southwest Energy. SWN is a ticker symbol. Right now on the daily basis, we can see prices below the bottom of its daily profile, red oscillator and chain sign. That would suggest to me it wants to make a run for its uh, prior swing points from December 20th. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we see that price is trading below its oscillator and change line inside its bearish structure profile. This suggests to move back to the 424 level. The monthly time frame has a TD9 count top. Price should get to 382. Below 382, you're looking at 218 to 304. So the direction on Southwest Energy at this stage here looks like it is to the downside out there. Thanks for waiting an extra day. I don't recall who it was that had asked about that. There was another question to take a look at Bitcoin. I believe this was from Michael P. He was short Bitcoin. He closed out that short trade wants to get back into a long position right now what i've got is just the i've, I've got the uh continuous contract up on my screen out here uh it's not going to change anything i don't have that bottoming signal as we speak so there's roads momentum indicator bottom and I mean, it still is in effect and it's in effect as long as price does not close below 47015 but that can't be right let's try that again can't close below 45515 and we're at 45790 so mike if you see a close below that level that i just gave you um you know then then the, there's the net bottom has failed that's the road's momentum indicator bottom you see that price is below that oscillator and change line that's currently printing at 46157 you at least need to see price close above that on a weekly time frame chart out here this suggests that a uh, td9 count bottom could form, could begin form, well, could form by next week out here. Uh, but short of that, price is likely to target 38.305. So, Mike, I don't have any signal to suggest that you would enter a long trade in Bitcoin. So just a uh, congrats on your trade out there and just uh, be patient. The next question was to take a look at uh, Southern Copper. Now, I can tell you I'm not going to go look at the charts, but when we take a look at high-grade copper, it's running into resistance, which is the top of its profile out there. But when I take a look at southern copper out here, it looks like it wants to go make a move to 64.85. That is the top of its weekly profile. If I look at the daily time frame chart out here, the daily time frame chart for southern copper says, hey, Steve-O, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to make a move to 65.97. Now, I know that uh, this individual is also, I believe this was David in Texas, who was taking a look at an A to B equals CD pattern. 
pattern, very similar to the A to B equals C D pattern that Brent and I were discussing. Here's our A to B A to B point out there. But this retracement is way less than a 0 0.382 retracement. And yeah, 0 0.238 is one of those. I don't know if that makes that out here. But so what we don't have to worry about is whether this is an A to B equals C D to the upside or not, because in essence we get about the same type of uh, the same type of a, a move out here, which would get us back into that 65.97 level. The reason why it is likely to do that is because price has taken out yesterday's high, which was a TD9 count top. So it does look to, like to me, Southern Copper is going to make its way up to that 65.97 level, but it's not getting help right now from Dr. Copper, uh, which is trading right into resistance. So just pay attention to that, David, and best of luck to you on that trade. Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. So I'm going to pull over the Apple chart out here. Who is long message? Uh, snowy cascading mountains in Washington, which has got to be beautiful out there. So Nancy says, could you give me your take on Apple as to whether it should it should hold this level and go back to its highs over the next few days? Um, so let's just take a look at the chart, see what they're communicating to us. When we take a look at Apple, we've got a confirmed top on its daily time frame. Yesterday was a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator signals, a little dark cloud cover. That was also uh, confirming the prior TD9 count top that is, in essence, still in place out there. So you've got two topping signals. Nancy's asking the question, will price find support here? Well, price is pulling back into its bullish structure daily profile area. So, Nancy, it has that possibility, uh, and that range would be between 174.40 and 177.17. If you were to see a close and two consecutive close below 174.40, then the message would be even more clear. Well, first it would be, hey, I'm going to head back to my prior swing point. That's December 20th. And then below that, 157.80. So the daily's got a topping pattern. The weekly still has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top and a TD9 count. And the monthly, I believe, also has a topping pattern out here as well. Well, could could form a TD9 count top this month being bar number eight of a, a TD9 count. So your question was, do I see Apple getting back to its highs? out here it may but blowing through those highs not seeing it because that's not the signal all right you've got a td9 count top you've got a rosemintum indicator top out here so price might find support though in this 177 17 area so that's our call right now nancy and apple and nancy nancy in washington uh, where we do get lots of great apples out there and actually some really great cabernet just saying out there steve of course stevie wishes he still had his taste back because then i would start to uh, drinking wine again not really much wine for me no reason to waste it anyways hey stay to the charts here steve -O. well the next chart is about uranium and this one is coming in from lee follow up to your question yesterday currently trading at the top of its consolidation 2585 what do we need to see a confirmed breakout out here so good question um, and we talked about a uh, consolidating pattern. The price is trading into it. So the top of that daily profile is at that 2585 level. We're at 2585. So uh, what we should do here, Lee, is at least go take a look at volume. Let's just see if the volume can assist you and I. We take a look at uranium. Ticker symbol here is URA. What we're looking for, folks, is hey, as price is moving into this uh, uh, resistance level, uh, here's that consolidation. You can see it. Uh, what's the swing point it's really trading into? I'd go with this little junior swing point from November 29th. It had volume of 1.4 million shares. Boy, you are pushing into it with big volume today. 5.9 million shares, but you haven't taken it out. And your question was, specifically, what do you need to see uh, to confirm a breakout? It's going to be a close above the top of that daily profile. Now, if you get that, you've got that consolidation measured move. But I can visually see that consolidation measured move is going to be greater than where the top of the weekly profile would be, which would be 27.88. So even though we've got that consolidation pattern, price is going to have to bust through that next level of resistance, which is 27.88. That's what we see when we take a look at uranium. Let me also, though, pull back that daily time frame chart here for Lee, and you got it 3092 would be the next resistance level. That's a TD9 count breakout, breakdown area. So pulling, pushing into a swing point for sure with volume. And uh, But now you can tell uh, out here, Lee, just how strong those sellers are at the top of that daily profile, 2585 being that number. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in, and uh, best of luck to you. Lee writes in and says, uh, can we take a look at Teva Pharmaceuticals? So we absolutely can. TEVA is a ticker symbol. And uh, Teva has a Rhodes Mintum indicator 
bottom. It did that back here when it formed that hammer candle. Now, the hammer candle was tested, but it held. This is the hammer candle from back on December the 20th. And uh, Lee, yesterday that was uh, tested and rejected. Don't know about the volume metric. But right now, what price has done is traded right up into resistance, the top of its bearish structure daily profile. So 863 is the number you need to see a close above. If you do get a close above that, then you're looking at a run to about $9.48. Your question was, uh, what are your thoughts on Tiva? Time to buy or sell? Sell, you got a valid bottom. You run up into a resistance level. So I don't know what your, what your holding time period was. If it was just a trade, whether you know where the sellers are at, and that's at 863, and that is held. Let's just take a quick peek at the volume here before we go to a break on Tiva. Just curious what the, it is doing as it pushes into that prior swing point. What did that swing point have? That swing point had volume of 7.8 million shares, and you're about 4 million shares right now. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't have a problem holding it. Do you sell it? It really depended on uh, depends upon your trading strategy and uh, what you. Why did you get in and where was your target? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So uh, three more requests on the request line. The first one from JJ. James wants to take a look at DHR. Danaher, would you like your thoughts? Thank you. I'm not in it yet. And uh, so you're close to, to where you might want to consider getting into it. Now, you would be trading the consolidation pattern. 
So it's in a clear consolidation of any other kind of signals. You're below the bottom of its daily profile. Not really great, but you're trading right back into the consolidation area. The bottom of the consolidation, a little bit lower, almost where yesterday's low was at, maybe just a tad below that at the 304.54 level. That's a daily time frame. The weekly time frame chart shows that price right back at support as well. And that's the bottom of its weekly profile. That's at the 305.95 level out there. So, you know, if you're into trading consolidation patterns, then okay. I don't have any other kind of signal out there to uh, suggest uh, anything else. So I hope that helps you out, uh, James. And thanks much for writing and Happy New Year to you as well. The next question coming in, it looks like we've got actually two questions on the same instrument, one from Mimi, one from Hector. And that is to take a look at the XON, X, 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 the XON, Exxon Mobil. And uh, yes, uh, it is in fact a A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. Now I'll just show you the small one. This is the small A to B equals CD pattern out here. That is the swing point. Now, of course, the week is not over. But right now, we know that prices trade above 66.38, the high from the week that began November 8th. That week generated a volume of 88 million shares. You're already at 82 million shares. It's only Wednesday. So assuming that price closed above 66.38, Hector, you have a small A to B equals CD to the upside that should take us to 72.24 or 76.12. Uh, there's a larger A to B equals CD, but we're not going to go ahead and write, uh, put that one in as we speak right now. We'll just deal with the smaller A to B equals CD pattern for Exxon Mobil. If I pull over the other Exxon Mobil charts out here, oh, I better really... Uh, uh, so that's on Exxon Mobil. It's headed higher. The, uh, the last question was to take a look at Cliffs Natural Resources. CLF is a ticker symbol out here. Um, if we take a look at Cliffs, this is bar number eight of a TD9 count. Nice wide ranging bar, not likely to form that or make a TD9 count high today. It's likely gutting for its most recent swing point in about that 2650 level. But you could get a TD9 count by Thursday. Uh, Mimi, so uh, pay attention to that. Folks, stay tuned for, uh, for uh, David White. He's up next, and I'll see you tomorrow.